Hey, how you guys doing? I hope you're having a good day, a good week, good week. Well, I'm doing fine myself. I got me a couple little new devices that I guess got recently. Got a, uh, um, got me another, another tablet, and I got me a cell phone. So I might, might have to do some videos on here. But sometimes this thing be acting up. So this maybe maybe this can help me out. But in the meantime, I use this one. Anyway, um, particularly the this is something hilarious. This guy that ran for president, uh, this bigger swami character. Um, I'm gonna let, let this let this video play, and he's running on a ch champagne for Trump. And it's, it's hilarious. He gets so much feedback. And he went on there. And he really come out to certain community. Particularly the black community. He tried to befriend them. You know, I've done videos on this guy in the past. And uh, this guy is something else. But this Ann Coulter, she put him in his place, boy. It was funny. Oh, it was it was hilarious. <laughs> Swami. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, he's such a funny dude. He's such a funny dude. Oh Lord. I've been laughing all week. I seriously, I've been cracking up every time I see the fact Ramaswamy and Ann Coulter. Oh, it just cracks me up. It cracks me up. It's the funniest thing so far. In 2024, it is the funniest thing. I'm telling you, he finally met the boogeyman that he once said on the campaign trail that he had never seen. Well, it hit him in the face. Stay with me. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Swami and Ann Coulter. Oh wow, man! It you know why you know what's so funny to me? It confirms what I've been telling you all. It confirms all that I have been telling you all. All right, so we're gonna get into it here for a few minutes, but first let me do my introduction. Hello, I am Attorney Augustus Corbett, one half of the Defiant Lawyers. And each and every week we bring you at least one legal analysis of some trending story having to do with politics, policies, personalities, Vivek Ramaswamy and Ann Coulter, or pop culture, to empower you with the information you need to defy this unjust legal system and to nullify systemic racism. If that interests you, <laughs> if that interests you, please like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell. Most of all, share, 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 all right? But yes, I have been cracking up all weekend, all weekend, watching that Ann Coulter and Vivek Ramaswamy interview. It is fascinating. All right, now, I have done several videos already on this topic, right? So I did a video about how non-whites try to be white or try to be accepted by whites. So I've, I've, I've actually talked about this. Past couple of days, I did a video on white Christian nationalism, okay? And several others that I have, have done. And it gets right to the heart of this. Right to the heart of this. All right, now. So let's begin <laughs> this video. Let's begin this video with Vivek Ramaswamy and what Vivek is going to do is sort of introduce his definition
definitions of nationalism, okay, of ethnic nationalism <laughs> and civics nationalism, all right? So let's watch that video and then we uh, watch Ann Cole to respond to it in just, in just a second, all right? Here goes. There's an N word that you're not allowed to say anymore, but I'm going to say it. Nationalist. It doesn't have to be a bad word. We got to distinguish between two different kinds of nationalism. The first is ethno nationalism. That's the kind people usually think of. And it's natural because most nations' identities have been built around an ethnicity or a religion or a monarch. And in that case, the track record of history hasn't been great for what that type of nationalism produces, either for a country or for its neighbors. Distinct from that, though, is civic nationalism. And that's the kind of nationalism that I think is relevant in the United States of America because our country is defined not based on an ethnicity, not based on a language or a monarch or cuisine or a religion, for that matter. Our country is defined on the basis of a civic set of ideals that brought together a divided polyglot and, yes, religiously diverse group of people 250 years ago. And so I don't think that that's the kind of nationalism we need to run from. I think we believe in the exceptionalism of those ideals. That's what American exceptionalism is about. It is a belief in the exceptionalism of the ideals that made this country great the first time around. All right. Okay, so I had to put my headphones on so that I can hear what Vivek Ramaswamy is saying here. Sorry, let me get this uh, set up here. Okay, all right. So you heard him define, give definitions for his understanding of nationalism. Ethnic nationalism and civic nationalism, all right? And he's making the argument that the country should be all about civic nationalism and not ethnic nationalism. Why? Because ethnic nationalism excludes him from the white conservative uh, tribe, if you will. As hard as he tries to be a part of that tribe, and Coulter made it clear that him and other non-white people will never be a part of that tribe. No matter how hard they try, no matter how anti-black they are, it doesn't matter, they cannot make it. Okay? They can't do it. All right? So, here's Ann Coulter's response to him. It's Ann Coulter. So, Ann, thanks for coming on, and I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Me too. Thanks for having me. That was a fantastic opening monologue. Uh, I too am a fan of yours. I'm going to make a point of disagreeing with you so that it will be fun. Um, yeah. You are so bright and articulate, and I guess I can call you articulate since you're not an American black. Um, can't, can't say that about them. That's, that's derogatory. Um, and that was a great opening segment. Lots of things to talk about there. Oh, and I agree with many, many things you said during, uh, in fact, probably more than, than most other candidates. Days um, when you're running for president, but I still would not have voted for you um, because you're an Indian. <laughs> oh, I still wouldn't have voted for you because of your race, because of your ethnicity, because you are an Indian. I like you. I like what you say. I like how you think. I like how you make me feel. I like how you are anti-black. I love that. But you still won't get my vote because you're Indian. Oh, Ramaswamy, what do you think about that? The people that you have worked so hard to be accepted by, they still reject you. Just like they reject us. So you found out, dude, that you're actually one of us. <laughs> you are one of us. No matter how hard you try not to be, you're one of us. Black and brown people. Melanated people. Non-European people non-white people. So all that you have done in your life
lifetime, Vivek, to be accepted into that club, you will never be accepted. No matter what you do, because you don't have the stock. <laughs> You don't have the stock. You don't have the ancestry. You don't have the DNA. You're still a brown person from India. And let this be a lesson for all of you non-white people who work so hard to be accepted by these racist, white supremacists, white nationalists. And Coulter let the cat out the bag. <laughs> she said on their behalf what they really think about even you, Vivek Ramaswamy, who has again done everything you can. You've done all the right stuff. You got that good education. Oh yeah, you made a lot of money. You're anti-black. All of that. But you still cannot be a part of the club. Now, what does that tell you black conservatives? And I'm not talking about, you know, black conservatives in terms of people who, again, want to conserve family values and so on. I mean, that's me. I want to conserve family values. I, 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 I want to conserve uh, wholesome homes. <laughs> I mean, that describes me. So I'm not talking about that kind of conservative. Most black people, as I said in a prior video, are conservative on some level. No, I'm talking about you black conservatives who are also white supremacists in your thinking. Mm -hmm. That's who I'm talking about. Right. If Vivek Ramaswamy in India, very wealthy in extremely anti-black cannot be one of them neither can you so you are actually selling out the African American community for naught it may pay well but you still are not going to get the thing that you crave the most full acceptance into the tribe so now let's listen to another video as Ann Coulter explains why you and Vivek and others like you will never, ever be a part of them. Okay? Here's Ann. Here's more of Ann. You know, the thing about nationalism, you're totally right. It is like to use the word nationalism. Oh, it's Hitler, it's Hitler. And, you know, Hitler had soup. That doesn't mean we shouldn't have soup. Hitler loved dogs. That doesn't mean you shouldn't love dogs. So I think we have to move past this. If Hitler did it, it must be bad. Uh, but I do notice when I was listening to your monologue, um, I, I don't think I do use the word nationalism. I would use a word you used in your monologue, which I liked quite a bit, and that's um, citizenship. There's citizenism. How about Americanism? Yeah. Uh, I'd also point out that the only people who are not allowed to be proud of their ethnic group um, do tend to be Anglo-Saxons. Oh boy, you can't be proud of being white. Whereas, you know, watch watch a soccer game. <laughs> See, um, you know, Venezuela, we're Mexicans. They don't. It's funny. Hispanics don't even think of themselves as Hispanics. They think of themselves as the country they're from. Um, I think French feel very proud to be French. We saw Macron expressly objecting wokeness on the grounds that this is an American institution, we're not going to import this. Um, so you do see basically every other ethnic group very proud of their ethnic group. Um, and the thing I'd say about America, okay, no, no single cuisine, um, but you can get Chinese food and Mexican food in Paris and Tokyo. Food has definitely migrated across the country. So I want you to understand what she is saying here. She's saying, Vivek, let's not use or let's not fight over nationalism because she's going to stick with ethnic nationalism. Whereas he want to and is trying to convince them to embrace civic nationalism. So she's saying, nah, let's not go there. So let's, let's talk about citizenship. Okay, let's talk about that. All right, because, yeah, let's not talk about uh, ethnic nationalism because she's essentially saying, I'm proud to be white. 
and I'm going to fight for uh, white nationalism and uh, so let's not go there. Now we can agree on being you know, loyal uh, citizens and, and, and so forth, but let's not talk about nationalism because she's not going to agree with him on that. All right, let's go back and finish because there's something that I really want you to hear that she says here. There is a core um, national identity that is the identity of the WASP, and that doesn't mean we can't take anyone else in, a Sri Lankan um, or a Japanese or an Indian, but the, the core around which the nation's values are formed is the WASP. I, we've never had a president who did that. There. That's what I wanted you to hear. The WASP. What exactly is the WASP? Let me show you. WASP equals white. Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And Vivek Ramaswamy, you're not white, you're not Anglo-Saxon, and you're not Protestant. You are an Indian who practices Hinduism. You are an Indian Hindi. You are not a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And you never can be and so she's saying here, it is the values of the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant that made this country great. And in her opinion, it is the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant and his values that need to continue to guide and lead this nation. And you can never be that. Vivek Ramaswamy. <laughs> you can never be that. You can never do that. Barack Obama is closer to being a wasp than Vivek Ramaswamy because Barack Obama's grandfather on his mother's side and he was probably a Protestant. I don't know. You know, when you think Protestant, just think yeah. non-Catholic, right? So in all likelihood, I don't know, but I believe Obama's grandfather maternal grandfather was Protestant so he was more waspy than Vivek Ramaswamy could ever be and so that's what she is saying here and then she references Kennedy without saying his name because Kennedy was like the first Catholic president so he wasn't completely wasp either because he wasn't probably he was white Anglo he was white Anglo-Saxon but he wasn't Protestant so Vivek Ramaswamy Dude, she told you in your face that you can never, ever be one of the WASP club members. Can't do it. And for that reason, she and many other whites will never vote for you. And that wasn't the first time he heard that. And this is why I think he is trying to you know, convince them to embrace this this civic uh, nationalism instead of the ethnic nationalism that they embrace. When I did my video on national, white Christian nationalism, I explained nationalism from the ethnic perspective because I know that's how they approach nationalism. I know that. But he was on the campaign trail and I believe his wife asked a white couple whether they were going to vote for him. And, and the wife finally coughed it up and said basically no because he's not the right color. <laughs> I mean, Boom. So that was not the first time. This is not the first time Boom. he heard this. Boom. And that's why I think he's out here now Boom. trying to convince them uh, to embrace his brand of nationalism. It's not going to happen. Because this country, you know, he talked about the country is based on a set of ideas that makes the country exceptional. Yeah, the country is based on the ideal of white supremacy. <laughs> That's what the country is based on, Vivek Ramaswamy. And you don't want to admit that because when you admit that, then 
you become an enemy of the people that you have worked all your life to be accepted by. But that's the ideal of this country. I heard Vivek Ramaswamy say on one occasion, someone asked him about white supremacy and he, he likened white supremacy to uh, the boogeyman, I think he said, or the Loch Ness Monster or something. And he basically said, well, I believe there may be a boogeyman or a Loch Ness Monster, uh, but I've never seen one. And when I find one, I'll let you know. Well, you just found uh, uh, the boogie woman. <laughs> You, you just found the boogie woman <laughs> and she told you to your face that because you're not a wasp you cannot Hi Shanice, how are you Jane? Welcome to Naya Sip on Sinaya and thank you all so much for all the love and support hope you all are doing correct You know usually when we tell them that you will never be paid no matter what because there are so many people they want to pick before you and you definitely will never get there right so Vivek had an encounter with Ancoja right and straight up in his face she actually made it known to him that he is not white that he is from India and that she, she um, he is not gonna get her vote straight up in his face and he is looking. Now, let's talk about this. Vivek Ramiswami is so anti black, right? So anti black that at any time, I think he's a conservative and all, what did they call them and all with that? Any time he is in them, it's all he wants to talk about is black people that, black people that, and the rest of it. Yeah. So he actually was planning to, uh, okay, I think the presidential election week, he actually backed out and all of that, right? And now this woman is telling it to his face that I will never have voted for him. And now this is to tell you how one colored people are so ready to vote for Trump and some other candidates that are not even good for them. Why? Because the person is a white person, like why would I go and vote for somebody that is not white, right? And which is a very terrible mentality. Mind you, I am not trying to tell you that Vivek Ramishami is, uh, is uh, uh, good for his nice like, out of it, but I am just telling you, let's get... <laughs> <laughs> I love it when a Trump-supporting Tunisian gets told exactly what white racists think about them. <laughs> Swami, mm -hmm. baby, he got introduced to Ann Coulter. <laughs> What's this? That's why I brought on today somebody who I think has some thoughtful perspectives on the future direction of our country, of our conservative movement, and on this question of nationalism and national identity. Somebody who's been fascinated for by for a long time and have interacted with on social media, but for the first time we're having a at least a live form conversation in the offline sense of it. It's Ann Coulter. So, Ann, thanks for coming on, and I'm looking forward to our conversation. <laughs> me too. Thanks for having me. That was a fantastic opening monologue. Uh, I, too, am a fan of yours, so I'm going to make a point of disagreeing with you so that it will be fun. Um, yeah. You are so bright and articulate, and I guess I can call you articulate since you're not an American black. Um, can't, can't say that about them. That's, that's derogatory. Um, and that was a great opening segment lots of things to talk about there oh and i agree with many many things you said during in fact probably more than than most other candidates um when you were running for president but i still would not have voted for you um because you're an indian we'll get back to that um <laughs> did y'all see his face did y'all see his face mm -hmm. I, I, I want to see the entire clip but i don't want to see it enough to give him a click in a view. That was enough for me. Vivex, his whole face was like, <laughs> if you don't know who Ann Coulter is, Ann Coulter has been in the political arena for years, and she has been a bold, out loud, in your face 
racist for years. It was rumored that she at one point was dating JJ from Good Times. Yeah, I, I, I forget what his real name is, but JJ from Good Times. They were supposedly had been dating dating at one point. I don't know if they are still dating, um, but yeah, Ann Coulter is a hot flaming racist. And I am so happy that she showed Vivek Ramaswamy what white racist conservatives what they really think about him. <laughs> I agreed. She says I agreed with a lot of what you had to say, but I wouldn't have voted for you because you are not a white man in America. <laughs> Which is bold and in your face racism. It could not have happened to a more deserving individual than Vivek Ramaswamy. <laughs> Listen, I saw this tweet and this tweet was attached to the video. Look at this. <laughs> Look at him showing all his pearly whites. Just cheesing and smiling. That was before she told him she wouldn't vote for him because he's an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, this is what the, the person who tweeted this video said. Ann Coulter is desperately trying to stay relevant as the most hateful and bigoted Republican woman in a pool of so many candidates. I believe that 100%. She, this person goes on to tweet, I can't believe I'm sticking up for Vivek Ramaswamy either, but she's absolutely vile. Yes, Ann Coulter is absolutely vile. She's been vile for years right? We've been calling her out for years, right? But I ain't sticking up for Vivek Ramaswamy. <laughs> no, I'm glad she cut off his face. <laughs> he thought fat meat wasn't crazy. And Ann Coulter said, yes, Vivek, actually, fat meat is crazy. <laughs> Partial 
English ancestry. And there it is, the ideology of sinner, the wasp, white Anglo-Saxon Christ. And this is why white women also overwhelmingly vote for people like Donald Trump because they are trying to secure their proximity to the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant male. And in true Derrick Bell fashion, as he mentioned in Faces at the Bottom of the Well, as long as that proximity gives white women and the glizzy swallowing minorities proximity to white male supremacy, they will continue to swallow that glizzy and also let you know openly that they're okay with it. So you all have the day you deserve. And if you don't like what I just said, don't argue with me. Argue with your mama and Aunt Coulter. <laughs> yeah, come look at this. Come look at this. Come look at this. I brought on today somebody who I think has some thoughtful perspectives on the future direction of our country, a more conservative movement, and on this question of nationalism and national identity. Somebody who's fascinated for Aunt Coulter. So, Aunt, yeah, thanks for coming on, and I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Me too, thanks for having me. That was a fantastic opening monologue. Uh, I too am a fan of yours. You are so bright and articulate, and I guess I can call you articulate since you're not an American black. Um, can't, can't say that about them, that's, that's derogatory. Um, and that was a great opening segment. Lots of things to talk about there. Oh, and I agree with many, many things you said during, in fact, probably more than, than most other candidates um, when you were running for president, but I still would not have voted for you um, because you're an Indian. We'll get back to that. Okay, so what Ann Costa just tried to say and what she did and what we tried to communicate most was black people, some black people, okay, is that at the end of the day, they still not going to pick you, okay? It's still not going to pick you. What she tried to say in this comment, right, specifically at the beginning, when she said, I can't say that about black people because that would be derogatory, is that we can play in y'all face, but black people has indicated that we cannot play in theirs, okay? And the same thing that other groups and talk crews too be trying to tell other black people, be quiet, you're talking too much, you're trying to make this a big deal, it's really not that serious, she's doing a compliment, okay, like y'all did in that black white video, I saw y'all running there, y'all all women in comment, that white lady comment, talking about it's a compliment, it's a compliment, and just like in culture, like when it's rooted in racism, it's not a fucking compliment, they're not going to pick you at the end of the day, and just like in culture just did, okay, the only thing is she took it all the way and told the truth in the end, and the difference is she went all the way and told the truth in the end, the truth in the end is that at the end of the day, I don't give a fuck you say, I don't care how much I agree with you, I don't care how much you cool, I don't care how much you agree with me, I don't care how much you like my compliment, I don't care how much you kiss my ass, in the day, listen to us, we still not going to pick your ass, and he sat there and laughed, you saw how he laughed when she said, oh, it's like he would, it'll be derogatory, he giggled a little bit, because he thought that was a dig, but what she was actually trying to say is that we can't play in black people's face. So they keep screaming and shouting that we can't and we don't get that space. The same thing that some of y'all be telling black people be quiet about. Don't say nothing. Just take it. It's a compliment. When we know for a fact that at the end of that compliment, at the end of that compliment is a slap in the face of racism. And I don't know what y'all call coons in the other communities, but it seems like it's spread a lot faster in y'all stuff than it do in black people's stuff. The only reason why people have arrived at that is because black people won't shut the fuck up and won't, and won't let people play in their face. And won't let people play in their face for white guys validation, okay? Because here he is vexed, sitting on the national, he is vexed, sitting on the national stage and the national internet, everybody watching that shit, and watching this lady play in his fucking face, and he's laughing and giggling, so much so subjugated that after she did that, did that, he went and tweeted that it's okay, that he respect her right to say and do all that, to do that, and that that is be racist, and I don't know if he know this, but we fought black people specifically in the front lines to make sure that civil rights protected the right for you not to be racist in America. Here you are saying it's okay, you want to fight for her right to be racist against the rights to say that and kissing white ass gets you at the end of the day. That's what it gets you at the end of the day. At the end of the day, once you get in the house, they get in the house and you got there by subjugating kissing ass. Kissing ass, at the end of the day, they're gonna kick you out the house and you're gonna leave with a shitty mouth. You're gonna leave with a shitty fucking mouth. A shitty, and you, and you got in there by subjugating yourself and kissing ass. At the end of the day, they still gonna kick you out the house and you're gonna leave with a shitty mouth. A shitty mouth. A shitty mouth. A dookie filled mouth. From kissing ass. From kissing white people ass. The big, the big, all I got to say is after kissing all that ass, after kissing all that ass, after kissing all that ass, how does it feel as we have always said? to know that they still not going to pick your ass. They still not going to pick your ass. They still not going to pick your ass. So this is all I got from this. I, I can actually argue with their key parts because some of them are key part warriors. The truth is that I keep saying this all the time. You know, all these conservative that things that, are, you know, uh, that uh, they are going to treat me better uh, when I join their camp and all that. I will be treated better. But the reality is that uh, they aren't going to treat me 
better. Because if they do not treat your own community right, how do you expect them to single you all out and treat you better? It's impossible. But then, I love this for Vivek because Vivek is just really so at a back. I love the fact that he is experiencing this firsthand. Mm-hmm. It's just very sweet. And it's straight up on his face. I wouldn't have voted for you. Why? Because you are Indian. And this is one of the reasons why they keep preserving like for blue no matter who and they keep doing this and they keep making mistakes they would rather vote the wrong person in i am not saying Vivek is actually not qualified but this is me saying from this angle like how they do their thing right they definitely will know that this person is not good for them this person is not going to do any better for them but they would rather vote blue no matter who right and then turn around later to tell you that you all told me this but we never listen can you all come out and save us in the end but i love the fact that it is it happened to him straight up so sometimes they can sit back if only their brain is going to you know make them sit back and uh, ask themselves questions you know because if this young man could tell you that uh, I mean, I would not have voted for you because you or even your ancestry do not even speak English. At all. You can imagine those tiny things that, I mean, why somebody would not even vote for somebody? Probably because you don't speak English or probably you're not, uh, because you're not palm colored, you know? Just because you are just from different, and of course it is Indian, right? And so he heard it. They cannot, she can't vote for him, you know? So. This is a very huge wake up call for him and for other people who think that uh, uh, you know joining white supremacy or trying to be a conservative just to get to people that look like me. Because most times they do it to get to people that look like me. And then when they do it, you see them being so anti black for no just a reason, you know. And trying to like, you know, be so mean and the rest of it. But uh, this is just a huge, a very good lesson, and I hope he learns from them all. The more you know, and culture has always said said something or have said something racist. He's always said something racist. He is who he is, and when we point it out, meaning black people. We always get told that, you know, maybe we're too sensitive, maybe we misinterpret it, or Ann is just being Ann, or she has the right to express her opinion, freedom of speech, or whatnot. But then Ann would, would, would say something, or say something like, when, she, when she's talking about other groups, she'll say, hey, other groups are flashed on to the black movement, to the civil rights movement. Or as I say, the black movement, the black rights movement. And we say, okay, yeah, well, it's true. And a lot of people, myself, could have said, well, she might be saying it because she's been intimate, she's dated Jimmy Walker. But she ain't, but then I thought about it, she ain't the only white person that have said this. If you sat down around enough white folk, those who have her views, then they would call out the Asian community. The Indian community, the Arab community, the gay community, white women, you know, people who are illegal, the Cuban community, all the different people. They say they have latched on to the black movement. And this is something that people like Malcolm X have said. Dr. King even said, he said in, this, in a certain way, but he said, and many others, yours truly. She's a few years back, she said it on uh, this week and panel uh, stepping up was trying to push back against it. and they were shocked that she said and a lot of us in the community were shocked that she said because like I said and cultures know the same race names but the other day when I saw her on the vet podcast and she basically told him how she felt about him and watching the response from the media 
I'm like, it's funny how y'all can say what she said is racist to Vivek, but when she's saying stuff to black folk that we find racist or insulting, y'all duck and dodge their own. Because those entities, those people in the media, those companies are racist. Those people are racist. But see, remember I told y'all, the Indian is the new, what they, I would say, what is they say the new black, or the new Asian. What I mean by new black is they they in 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 them. See, blacks, we were always in, but never really in. Meaning, you like our culture, but you don't like us. You like the Latino, but you like I mean, we give you cover. You like the Asians, but what they give you cover. You like the the Arab, you like these other communities who give you cover. But the Indian, y'all like because you know they want to be white so bad. They go out there and would defend y'all to the nail. They go harder than any other of these self-hating groups. Mm. But they look too, they, they remind them too much of black folk. Indian skin is just as dark as ours, probably even dark in some cases. But they'll run, they'll run away, they want to run away from them. Vivek and all these other Indians, they go hard for white supremacy. But they would never be accepted. I guess they forgot when 9-11 happened, it wasn't just going after this, the, the people that air persuasion. A lot of people couldn't tell the difference. They feel like they mostly all terrorists. But then again, if you think of some of these attacks, some of these, these terrorist attacks, some of them have been hindered. I mean, who's excuse me? But for some reason, we ain't supposed to talk about that. For some reason, we ain't supposed to acknowledge that. For some reason, we just supposed to ignore that. I warned y'all three years ago about the fact about his racism. When he thought Ann Coulter was making a joke about black folk, he was head. He had that smile. But when Ann said, I was gonna vote for you got your end, he had like 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 he got kicked in the groin. At the beginning of that podcast, he was trying to be cute. You know, the other end word is nationalism. There was a dig he was playing, he was trying to be funny about black folk. And then as him and Ann talk, he came right back to black folk. I don't believe in reparations or affirmative action. Now the thing is, the fact is not the first Indian to have anti-black hatred. Remember Gandhi? I remember these kids when they talk about Dr. King, I wouldn't give just sing the praises of Gandhi. But I remember when I first heard about how Gandhi felt about black folk. I, I had to be what fourth grade, and I had two teachers, two female teachers that said, "Yo, we're not gonna lie to y'all about about Gandhi." And as I progressed through grammar school, and as a high school, and I stopped watching documentaries, and my parents stopped talking to me about it, that's when you found out about it. That's why a lot of black folks, when people talk about gun, they say, hey, yo, gun, he didn't like black folk. He, he despised black people. You go read some of his writings. He hated black people. This is why we notice now they don't even mention gun no more. When they talk about Dr. King, but back in the day, gun, that's all you heard. Dr. King and Gandhi. Dr. King, Dr. Mm-hmm. King was inspired yeah. by Gandhi. Right. Yeah, about, about you know, right. the, the, the protests and stuff. To a certain extent. If you pay, I told you guys, if you pay attention to, to, to the TV, TV, the TV shows, the commercials and movies, you see a lot of Indians in commercials now. Watch how they depict it. Remember when that guy came out? And he was talking about Apu, the Simpsons character. He was complaining how they was depicted. And he picked the Simpsons character. Mm. He went after an animated character. Here it is. Here it is. You you guys kill me. How y'all complain about how y'all being depicted, but y'all come very into the very neighborhoods and own the stores. Apu wasn't that far. Actually, the Simpsons 
clean, clean the character up. To, to be honest with you, they really didn't depict Apu the way they should have depicted him. I mean, they could have really went in, but they didn't like that. Y'all set up here, y'all parents, grandparents came to our community. Brought all that poison into our community. They got liquor stores all up in our neighborhood. You can't take it in their neighborhood. Do you think I go into a predominantly Hindu, I mean, Indian community and open up a business? You think they're supporting? Hell no. A few years back, a, 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 a young woman gave birth to a baby, threw the baby off a balcony in Chicago. And the media, they, they said it without saying it, but she got she had a baby by a black dude. If you know a lot of these stories, they said the Hindu father and mother found out that their daughter was married to, to there was a couple stories. I remember it was one, no force. The father killed his daughter and her husband because she was with a black man. He burnt up the damn building because he found out that his daughter was with a, a married a black man. So when Ann Coulter said what she said to him, I didn't feel sorry for that. I laughed. Because these Indians, and I know usually I do my not all, but I, I had to go back to my experience growing up and my observations. I only come across, I didn't call it one or two in my life that been, been cool. And I come across quite a few in my, in my life. Culture ain't the only one that looks at them a particular way. Vivek and his wife went out there and was pandering. And Coulter sat there and insulted him. It's like them, them people that were trying to pander why he was running for president. And he didn't call them racist. But when you had black folk that he wasn't attacking Vivek, he attacked them, called them racist, called them worse than the clan. Remember that? Black folks didn't do nothing to Vivek. Every time you talk about black folk, he's slamming us. But Ann Coulter and Sean Hanley, Donald Trump, and many others in the media, they've come at him like a nasty. But that gets whatever he gets, or whatever he, he got coming to him, as he said, to think that he, he wants to be accepted by, by the so called government so bad, he will sell his soul. Y'all heard me use a term with the Indian. This is a term where they call people who are Arab or Indian. They call them sand names. These people try to run away from who they are. They know where they come from. They try to say, I'm, I'm Asian. <laughs> I'm East Asian. All you motherfuckers got brown skin. Where you get your brown skin from? Vivek and Nikki Haley and them and Dinesh D'Souza and many more of them, they, they couldn't come. If it wasn't for, if it wasn't for black folks marching and getting shot at in fire holes, in fire bomb, in lynch, y'all still be better over there with the cow. You still be walking the filth. See, nobody. See, you know why they don't like people like that? You, 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 you're playing the game a little too hard. The family fathers. See, that's their shit. They don't only want to wrap these stuff around a flag and get away with it. You can't do it because they know it's not a thing. Yeah, you was born here, you first generation American, but you ain't never going to see you as American. See, Arnold Schwarzenegger wasn't even born here, but they don't look at Arnold Schwarzenegger because he's white. Arnold Schwarzenegger was not even born here, but they made sure he was governor. You would never, they would never accept you. See, at least if you was a Democrat, you might have a chance. And then if you was a little bit lighter, and you could, you can, your name, if you had a different name, maybe, maybe you'd be accepted. But you're too dark, bro. 
and you too and you too fall. And Colton has said some racist shit, but I don't think she's ever been that blunt with a black person. I if she has, I don't recall. And Ann Colton said a lot of racist shit towards black folk, but she ain't never been that blunt and said that to a black person. She might have said, oh, you're a Democrat, I can't vote for you. But she never said, you're black, I can't vote for you because you're black. She said, I couldn't vote for you because you're in me. She don't care how much you, she said she liked your policies. She liked the way you think, but she said she don't know. She don't like you. I mean, he like he lost his best friend when she said that. But then he turned around and he still wouldn't slam. And then tell you how how how, how self hating opportunist this dude is. And this is the thing. And Colton dated again, you do. She dated Denise the Susan. So so and. She ain't lay down with you. Oh, she oh, she been a pipe in. But other than that, she don't want you to be want being being elected official. As long as she can get off, she good to go. And you know what? I'm not even mad at Ann Coulter. But she being consistent. But the thing is that that whole part that podcast. Then the event still found a way to bring it back to black folk. Well, when I was on the south side of Chicago and talking about it, they were talking about we built this country and you, y'all, we, you, we're black. I don't think black people should be on anything. You know, reparations. They, 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 they was talking about years ago, 18 something, they could have gotten something. But I don't think they own up this generation. It's not this baby. I don't, I don't believe in front of action. It's not meant to just, you know why you don't believe it? Because it's not, you're not going to get it. Your ancestors to build this country. Black people were still sharecropping as, as, as late as 1970 some. There's still black people in this country still sucking tonight. Bill Maher and his white guests are still trying to say that black folks should be thankful. And the country is a lot better for, for whom? For whom? A little spug motherfucker just sit up here and talk about what black folks can do. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't a black folk. But see, what we did is we let our, our, our pastors, the ones that thought that we just seen kumbaya out here, but like these people, they so forgiving. Gosh darn. We, we see an error of our ways. Let's go ahead and embrace it. No. This is why when people talk about this coalition, what coalition? No, no, what? I, I take that back. Look at the road car. What was the name for California? When the nation was out here talking shit, you the only one that I've seen went out and say, hey, the nation, I'm not the nation, I keep saying that company. Uh, 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 that, that is not, buddy. Uh, 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 John Berger, the nation, but. Uh, Vivek, he said, Vivek, you need to understand, plus for black America, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Nikki Haley, the same way, Nikki Haley was dismissive of, of, of racism. But then she said she experienced racism. They forget, Nikki Haley forget, when her father came to this country, they wouldn't hire me to teach at a black college. I mean, a black university, excuse me. But see, they want to be white so bad they can taste it. See, white white, white people who are racist, and there's a difference between white people who are racist and white people who are not. White people are racist. They let you sit at the table. They may let you get a little taste, but they don't know how to take this. They may let you get a sniff. They put the food right in front of you. They let you get a sniff, and you can get that sniff. They can get that sniff and tice it. Ooh, I get the taste of that, that, that little ham. The ham is the, ham is the metaphor. Ooh, I get the taste of the smell of that turkey is a metaphor. Ooh, that cake ooh, looks so the, the, the delicious. Oh my gosh, I just can't wait to taste it. You might take your 
anything that takes some of the, the glaze off your hand, mm -hmm, it tastes good. And you and you just oh, I want I just want to taste so bad. So you can eat it and get a taste of it. And if you got for somebody else to get it, you would do it. See, black folk, we already know. We gotta we gotta do with the leftovers. We gotta do it the scraps. We gotta make something out of the scraps. And we're tired of it. A lot of us, we don't care to sit at the table. We don't expect to sit at the table. We... He's absolutely right. And people like Vivek, you know, where it comes from is that some some people come from different parts of the world like Vivek. And and there's, there's, there's a caste system over there in his where his parents are from. So they treat the darker ones. And then are, then are there are descendants uh, they're Indians and African, African and India too, and they kind of descended too, and they kind of look down upon because like of the, the regions of where they where they from, and and so if you go and look at how the they skin like the cream, and they and they bo and they bully and they Bollywood, they promote your Eurocentricism, and over there. So they, some of them bring that mindset over here to, to America, to America, and, they, and some of them instill it in their children. And, so, and they're not the only group of people, there's other people that do the same thing. But it, it, it doesn't surprise me about people like the person, but I'm glad he had, it, that should send a message to them. And no matter what, that's what they're gonna see you. You can scrub that stuff off your skin. It is what it is. You can't help it where God brought you with the region where you're from. See, there's no see, and and like Gandhi, he thought he was of upper, upper class. Gandhi was even discriminated against. He was even, he was discriminated during his time, and they probably in the same line over there. His parents is probably in the same line, you know, probably the similar same culture in India. Is he is, and when he when he was in South Africa, how he he didn't want to be put in jail with the blacks. Gandhi said this, but God, God, when they treat, but the English, the British didn't treat them any well. But yet you better than us. You see how it's passed over. Now you 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 got a taste, vivid got a taste of it. Because they, because they put oh, you 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 got the education, you know. With, with education, we have a certain name. It don't mean nothing, and they don't understand. It don't mean because your name is Patel. It don't mean nothing. At the end of the day, it don't mean is white white what wasp. That's how the way you see it. They see you like that. You you have similar hair to, but they still see you like that. And, and, and it's not just you, this it's the, how did we say the milk Arabs they see certain Hispanic groups the same way but yet there are certain people that reflect that to, at us even certain other Asian groups Koreans Japanese Chinese but everybody better than black black people we let low cast of everything we, 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 we mocked at everything. But no, it was time for them to get it. He got a taste of his own. And I, I laughed at it, at it too. Because he dismissed the, of, of, the, of our suffering. But he think because his mom, money and his education, he better than everybody. And he probably come from some privileged home. And, it's, and you can tell us, he come from some, his parents probably kind of spoiled. Him. But he got a taste of reality. And then when he went out to Iowa, because we were rent free in his mind, he went to go st sing some stupid, lame ass rap in Iowa, and these people looked at him like he was like he was an idiot. Old older white people, he get out there out there trying to rap, trying to get all hip and rap. But you don't like black people though, white, and they saw they saw right through it. Oh my goodness, the guy is a joke. He's a joke. 
And yeah, and, and let no more much butt kiss any dude. Like they said, you still ain't gonna get be at the in the table. Trump will probably pat you on the head, look good in front of the cameras, but at the end of the end of the day, he's gonna he's, he's gonna be like Elon Musk and the rest of them. They want people that sit around that table and look just like them. And some of you other people that some of these other people that come to this country, you can't accept that. That they want people that look just like them. Well, I'm, I'm more educated than, than they are. We want people to look just like them. Because in the end, it's a company. Like I said, America ha has this, this people, some people in this country have that mindset. They want people, the, the white area, white Protestants people, want white people to look like them when they do business, when they do commerce, when they do and everything, when they live next door to them. It is in the family. It don't matter your education. It don't matter your, your name. That's what the, because you think you're better than somebody. You come over because you've been seeing sh shows and mov movies and stuff. And, and maybe some, some racist person tell you what these black folks are really about. The news told you. But they didn't tell, tell you when when we at war with a brown country, you gonna get gonna get the taste of it. Even though you're not, even though your people probably not not be what's over there. But when you got brown skin, like your Arab counterpart, they see they white people see you as brown. Some white people gonna see you like that. It's like they see us black. Oh, I'm not like those people. Don't don't matter, bro. You in America. It's, and I said it a long time ago. It's a totem pole. The totem pole of America is like that. It is what it is. And so, yeah. And, and he grew up in the Cincinnati suburb. Down here. Yeah. So he probably had a certain projected view. And he probably talked around, had, had parents talked around. I, I know people like in his background. And, he, and, his, and some of his friends, a few from Asian and some were white. But he didn't get to that mainstream white. He, he didn't understand that. So he thought by agreeing with, against, the, against the blacks, that's what he would do. And it fall back on him. Because when you had a, a, a woman like Ann Coulter, she had to remind you right in your face. That's and that's a, and that's and I always said that's the other side. People don't tell you of America. There's some Americans that think just like Ann Coulter. Not all, but some that do. They do it in your face, and they so bold. These tiny, they wouldn't even do it. They 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 so bold. They do it in your face now. They have jumped off a cold with it. <laughs> you see, some white people keep that under coded. They didn't want people like that. They keep it behind closed doors and have their polit political opinions about, about different groups of people. Now it's like this Aunt Coulter just brought it forward. She just come out like Donald Trump. She just come out the closet and hey, we ain't mad. Some of us ain't mad. We appreciate your honesty. We we appreciate it. I'm glad. To, to stop. Let's stop. Stop beating around the bush. Like Biden, he's in denial, but he feels the same way. He he feels the same way. Don't let him, cause he got a black secretary. So he he did that for political reason to, to stay in power. But when you do the history of, of Biden, check out his history. He, he got to tell Trump is racist. He was in, in Trump. Then he got to be just. Then he he he's a hypocrite. Cause they both thought the same thing during during that time, especially when the central the situation in Central Park. Talk, what even though Donald Trump said he think what he felt about the young man, but look what what at the same time years later, three or four years later, what did Bob do? When it came to the drug epidemic, 
the, the cocaine and crack, and the cocaine was it, and mostly in the white community, two to five years. Crack cocaine in the black community, fifteen to twenty-five years to life. Both doing drugs, but he, he penalized that, and, and and Bill Clinton was a part of it. What I'm saying, what I'm saying, people, it don't matter. Two, that's why people say it's two wings of the foe. We don't like you either way as a group of people. We're trying to annihilate you. Stop your reproduction. And you don't, they do it politically by putting you in the prisons or eliminate you. This is why I said America has a spirit of racism. And people don't even want to admit it. But I'm glad Ann Coulter brought it forward. I'm glad in these last days, it's t it's enough of this hot and stuff and denial. We don't want other people to know. They're going to know. No, bring it forward. Because it's going to come out one way or the other. Well, it, maybe we shouldn't put it on TV. It's going to race. You can't hide racism. You can't hide it no more. You can't even hide it with your face. Black people have caught up. We... We've been, we, we have lived next to white people for 400 years, so we already know what the spirit is about. Every time they try to signify, that's why we do. Why do they always got it? Because we know the spirit of it. We know when you try to weave it, and, and some of us know it. That's why it, it, it frustrates them, because they can't do it, especially when you can prove it. And that's what in culture, people like that. But anyway, I just don't want to go on. But yeah, that's what it is. And so Vivid got just what he deserved. And and let this be a lesson like the, to the other ones. Ride ride against ride against us. You might ride against us, thank you for the other team. But in the end, you're not gonna get no further than we are. And we've been in this country. So as you belittle us and look down upon us. And, and tell this to, and, and, and the, those are the ones who translate this to your parents' language. They belittle us, they're coming after you. And those who have parents and relatives and friends that can't pre speak the proper English, that when they look at us, they look at us like we, like we step up, come out of the pit, because it's coming back to you. If we go down, you go down. Because in, in the land, the United States land, when it comes to different ethnic groups, watch what's going to happen. Watch what's going to happen. Go up, and like I said, travel across this country. You'll see it. In certain places in this country, it's still like that. It hasn't gone away. You'll see. As I said, live long enough. You'll see. All right, then, ladies and gentlemen, you have a good day. See you on the next video.